Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Assalamu alaikum. Today I'm going to take a new approach to demonstrating the spherical earth. Now behind me, you'll see a typical mosque. And right over my shoulder, you'll see a lit area that has kind of a roundish top and then a rectangle underneath it. That's called the Qibla, and that is the direction to Mecca. Muslims are required to pray five times a day at very specified hours facing Mecca. So it's essential in Islam for every Muslim to know the general direction of Mecca from wherever he or she is at any time. Now for the last couple of weeks I've been doing a series on the work of Dr. Lee McIntyre, How to Talk to a Science Denier. And one of the things that he identifies as one of the tropes and the causes of science denial and they include such things as economic advantage or ideological, political, or even religious beliefs. Now, over the last few years, I found that flat earthers tend to come out of the intelligent design young earth creationist camp that believe in the biblical story of Genesis. Religious belief and fervor seems to have a very large impact on their belief that the earth is flat. You know, I got to thinking about that, and fundamentalist Christians are not the only ones that take their religion very seriously. Islam tends to take its religion very seriously as well. And as a result, they have a very strong motivation to understanding and being able to determine the direction to Mecca at any given time. And there are a number of techniques for doing this. I'm going to go over several of them in this video. So let's cue up the music and have a look at Islam and the direction of Mecca, the Qibla. Now behind me is the Kaaba, and because I'm not so certain on my pronunciation of that, I'm going to refer to it in its English translation, the Cube. This is one of the holiest sites in Islam, and all Muslims are directed to pray towards this object in Mecca five times a day. Now throughout history, Muslims have prayed to different sites. At one time it was Jerusalem. Currently it's this object called the Kaaba, which is the Cube in English, and it's essential for all Muslims to be able to find their direction to this object in order to properly perform their prayers. So it was essential from the very start of Islam to be able to determine the direction to wherever it is you're supposed to be praying to at any time. Now there are a number of ways that they were able to determine this. Now initially it was just kind of a general direction because they didn't really have a good way of determining the exact direction and you would pray to the east or you would pray to the south depending on where you were. However, as Islam expanded and, and went into new parts of the world, it became more important to them to be able to determine this key direction. The cube is located in Mecca in Saudi Arabia and it is within the tropics, so there are two days every year that the sun is directly over the cube in Mecca. If you are in the same hemisphere as Saudi Arabia and Mecca, on a very specific date at a very specific time, you need to face towards the sun, and that will be your direction to Mecca. Now, in about the 9th century AD, Islamic scholars developed an understanding of spherical trigonometry. The spherical coordinates of Mecca were incorporated into early astrolabs, and here's an example of one here. With some training, you could use an astrolab to determine the direction to Mecca because the location of Mecca was actually inscribed on the astrolab itself. Now to do this, early Islamic scholars developed a method to use the stars to determine the location of Mecca, and then by comparing the stars at your location to the stars over Mecca, you could find the direction of the Qibla. This essentially was an early use of spherical trigonometry that was inscribed on an instrument that you could carry with you in your travels. Most mosques would have an instrument like this, or they would use an alternative method. Since Mecca is located within the tropics, there are two days every year that the sun shone directly over Mecca, much like the well in Syene for Eratosthenes. And on the appointed day of the year and time, you could literally face the sun 
and that would show you the direction to Mecca. But a problem arose as Islam continued to expand out of the hemisphere that was centered at Mecca. If you were on the opposite side of the world, that would include North and South America, you had a bit of an issue because the sun wasn't up at the appointed time. Well, initially what they would do is they would actually kind of look to the southeast and call it good. However, that wasn't good enough for them, and they developed a technique of looking at the sun when it was at the antipodal position to Mecca which meant if Mecca was on one side of the earth, when the sun was directly over the antipodal or opposite point on the earth, you could use a similar technique. You would face away from the sun and look in the direction of your shadow. And the direction of your shadow was the shortest and most direct route to Mecca. Essentially what they were doing was a great circle. Guess what I got, folks? And it came with a copy of Robotham's book. Now let's use the Gleason map to demonstrate a problem that we have with a flat earth. Now right here is Santiago, Chile. Mecca is up here. Now if we put a ruler on this, now if you were a Muslim in Santiago, Chile, that would indicate that you would almost have to look north. However, the actual direction to Mecca, the closest most direct route to Mecca, from Santiago, Chile, is roughly in that direction. Explain that on a Gleason map. Well, Flat Earthers, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do on this channel. How'd you like to win $100? All right, not a lot of money. I've got it. I'll be happy to PayPal it to you if you successfully meet my challenge. Now, here's the challenge. You have to tell me the direction of the Kibla from Buenos Aires, Argentina. You have to be within 10 degrees of the correct shortest distance from Buenos Aires to the cube in Mecca. Now, if you think that you can do that, I want you to go to the description of this video. There's a PayPal link there. You donate $20 to the channel and give me your direction. Now, if your direction is correct, according to Islamic authorities, I will return your $20 donation to you via PayPal. However, in order to win the $100, first you have to give me the correct direction. Then you have to be able to explain exactly how you got it without using any globe navigational material. No globe maps, no globe distances, no great circle courses. You're going to have to show me on a flat earth map how you obtain that distance. And then you have to tell me the direction to a point on your map of my choosing. And we will verify that based on air navigation routes. So if you're up to it, the link is in the description. Okay, let's finish up on something that's actually kind of interesting to me, and it may be the subject for a video in the future. Now, when we started getting more people into space, including some that were Muslims, such as this young lady right here, how do you practice Islam in space? Now, if you're on the ISS, you've got 16 sunrises every day. If you have to do five prayers a day, that's 80 prayers, or one every 18 minutes. That's a problem. What direction do you face? That's another problem. So the Malaysian Space Agency actually convened a conference of 150 Islamic scholars to try and deal with this issue of how do you practice Islam in space. And they address that and many other issues, such as what happens when they go to Mars? What happens if you meet somebody from a, a, an alien civilization? These are all questions that they were looking into. How do you pray if you can't move, if you're strapped into a couch, or if the situation is inconvenient? And they came up with some very interesting answers. I'll share a couple of them with you right now. Uh, first of all, your prayers, your prayer cycle is going to be based on the prayer cycle of the last place on earth that you physically touched. So that kind of settles that. Second, where do you face? Well, you face towards Mecca. Uh, if you don't know where Mecca is, uh, you face towards the projection of Mecca, they say. If that doesn't work, face towards earth. And if you don't know where Earth is, well, take your best guess and stick with it. The bottom line is, when it comes down to things like this, Allah does not require you to do that which you cannot do. 
do your best. It's the prayer that counts. And I want to close on one thing that I found very interesting about the conference, and that was addressing the possibility of Islamic astronauts landing on Mars. Should a Muslim land on another planet? And they came to the conclusion that the Koran indicated that Allah wanted his people to explore all of his realm, and that includes Mars. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for your support of this channel. I hope you found this as interesting as I did researching it, and there'll be more on this in the future. Take care, folks. Sun